Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Databricks video. Today's video would be a short one and it will be about incremental loads in Databricks from cloud storage. We are going to explore the benefits of incremental ETL using Databricks Autoloader and the copy into command. Ingesting data can be complex sometimes because we want to process only the new data. We don't want to process data that has already been processed. It's a waste of time and resources, right? Plus, it would become unmaintainable to process all the data from the beginning again and again. We don't have this luxury in real life where we have constant streams of arriving data. Okay, now let's briefly see a couple of slides about the autoloader and the copy into command, and then let's move to Databricks. <music> Autoloader. Autoloader incrementally and efficiently processes new data files as they arrive in cloud storage without any additional setup. We can identify the schema when we initialize the stream and the autoloader auto detects changes and it supports schema evolution to capture new columns. We can also add type hints for enforcement when the schema is known and we can rescue the data that does not meet our expectations. For example, when we have a change in the data type. How does Autoloader track ingestion progress? This is taken from the documentation. As files are discovered, their metadata is persisted in a scalable key value store, ROXDB, in the checkpoint location of your Autoloader pipeline. The key value store ensures that data is processed exactly once. So in case of failures, Autoloader can resume from that point onwards where it left off by the information stored in the checkpoint location and continue to provide exactly one guarantees when writing data into Delta Lake. We don't need to maintain or manage any state ourselves to achieve fault tolerance or exactly one's semantics. So it's pretty easy, right? Everything has been done for us. We just enable the autoloader and using uh, the checkpoint location, we keep track of the state of the data. Moving on, we have the copy into command. Copy into loads data from a file location into a delta table. This is a retriable and idempotent operation. Files in the source location that have already been loaded are skipped. Copy into command internally uses key value store, rocksdb, to store the details of the input files, like in a similar fashion that we have um, using autoloader. This information is stored inside the delta table log directory. This acts like the checkpointing information for a streaming query, like that's uh, the equivalent of the autoloader. Next time a copy into command is triggered on the same table as a first step, the data from the RocksDB is loaded and compared against the input files. Under the hood, a dedupe logic is performed to ensure idempotency. Now the difference here, this is not for streaming queries. This is for batch file ingestion. The copy command is for batch file ingestion, usually for a small number of files uh, when we want to re-ingest data and uh, it's in SQL syntax. On our Databricks workspace, I have a notebook here and just uh, the code for the autoloader. And this is the syntax. If you're going to use autoloader, to read CSV files, to load CSV files from Databricks file system, from DBFS, and also store the data into a Delta table in Hive Metastore, in this example at least. How can you enable autoloader? First, let's see the syntax here. That would be spark.readstream. You specify the format, cloud files, and this is how you enable autoloader using format cloud files. Then you have to specify the type of the files that you want to load. In our case, is CSV files. Uh, the CSV file has headers, so headers are true. And we can also infer the data columns, the data types of the columns here with this option cloud files dot infer column types equals true. And this is automatically autoloader with detect the data types of the columns. And here where it says scheme evolution mode, add new columns is the default mode. 
so we can skip that but here you can go into the documentation and see all the modes you can see add new columns is the default mode what happens when uh, reading new column stream fails new columns are added to the schema existing columns do not involve data types so if the stream fails what do you have to do well you just have to restart the autoloader and then everything will be fine uh, we have the rescue mode schema is never evolved and stream does not fail due to schema changes all new columns are recorded into the rescue data column so autoloader automatically adds a new column called rescue data column and uh, here we have fail on new columns the stream fails and the stream does not restart unless the provided schema is updated or the authentic data file is removed and then mode none when mode is none um, does not evolve the schema new columns are ignored and data is not rescued un unless the rescue data column option is set stream does not fail due to schema changes so let's see the default mode first uh, we also have to specify the schema location here uh, in our dbfs and then dot load and we provide apparently the path that the data exists here it's under file store slash data so we are going to load several csv files called data one then data two then data three and data four so that's why the star here that means we are going to load all the files that begin with data and uh, then we use dot write stream format delta we will specify the checkpoint location because it's uh, streaming as we said we need to, to have a checkpoint location that would be again in our file store option merge schema equals to true and then to table and here we specify the table name of the delta table that we want to store the data in our hive metastore uh, one thing here if you want to use autoloader in batch mode you can use this option trigger dot uh, trigger open bracket once equals true and that would run only for the data that has not processed yet so it will run one time just load the data that it hasn't uh, processed and it will stop which is very convenient because uh, if you don't have you know uh, streaming data you can use you can still use autoloader in batch mode it and it would be a lot less expensive let's load our first csv file so we go into our file store let's upload let me upload the first csv file as you can see it's data1.csv if we run this uh, here let's see what it, it does it should initialize the stream and load the data into the target table yeah let me run this command first and now give it a second yeah it initializes the stream you can see the spark job here give it some time yep the stream has been initialized you can see uh, here the raw data as well yep you can see there is data because there is a batch of data because we uploaded the CSV file so we can query the target table uh, demo that we created here now now this line uh, it's actually it went to zero again because uh, we don't have any data we loaded what we already had so let's query the demo table and you see the data here 
as you can see, we have the underscore rescued data column and which is added automatically by the autoloader. But this is our data. We have device ID, temperature, RPM, angle, and that's it. So uh, let's upload a second CSV file. Let's go with more data. And automatically here, it should start. It You will see a spike. Yeah. Uh, that it loads the new data here as you can see yeah there is a spike here now if we query the data the table again we can see the new data now we have four columns right as you can see device id is an integer because we have zero one two three right so that's an integer data type integer now Let's upload the CSV file that the device ID column is a string. So let's upload the new CSV file. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see a spike here. Now, as you can see, because we changed the data type of the device ID, for example, now that's a string AAA and BBB. Now, it loaded the data, but the data from the device ID column went to the rescued data column, right? You can see it here. Let's upload one more CSV file that actually has more columns than the original file. Let's see. Data4.csv. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So the stream failed. The error is encountered unknown fields during passing color, which can be fixed by an automatic retry equals true. Remember what the documentation says here, stream fails, new columns are added to the schema, existing columns do not involve, uh, evolve data types. So if we rerun this one, it should get the new, uh, the new column. Let's see what happens. So we reinitialize the stream. And let's query the data again. Yeah, so the new column has been added and you can see the data here, right? So, and now if we upload a similar CSV file, like the last one with the additional column, it's going to add the data as well. So let's see, we expect a spike again. Yeah, and it got the new data. Here you can see the new data. So this is how Autoloader works with uh, this mode. You can use the rescue mode. Uh, if you want, it's going to, the schema is never evolved and the stream does not fail due to schema changes. So what is going to happen if we follow a similar pattern here with uh, rescue mode instead of the default mode, uh, everything would go to the rescued data column. So the uh, the new color, it's not going to be added as a column. That's it. Apparently, the mode you are going to use depends on your needs. You can uh, try and see what happens with the rescue mode or with a uh, failing new column, so with none. There are plenty of options here to play around. Uh, to fit your needs. So let's move to the copy into command here. Let's create a table, a delta table, if it doesn't exist, called my underscore demo and copy into the target table, which is my underscore demo from this CSV file, the last CSV file that we uploaded, file format equals CSV, header equals to true, 
and cop copy options e equals uh, we have merge schema equals to true so if we run this it's going to create a delta table and it's going to copy the data from the csv file to the target table so it copied to records so if we select the data from the target table you will see the data that we have in the latest uh, csv file that we uploaded in the documentation you can find when to use copy into command and when to use auto loader uh, where it says here if you're going to ingest uh, files in the order of thousands you can use the copy into command so if you have small data sets you can use the copy into command if you are expecting uh, millions of uh, files then use autoloader autoloader requires fewer total operations to discover file compared to the copy into and can split the processing into multiple batches meaning that autoloader is less expensive and more efficient at scale if your schema evolves frequently, autoloader is better uh, when it comes to schema evolution and schema inference. When you want to reprocess or re-upload uh, data files, then it's better to use the copy into command. Well, because as you can guess, it's easier to specify the data that you want to reprocess uh, with the copy into command. You specify the data exactly the data you want to reingest and that's it the autoloader is a bit more tricky uh, for even more scalable and robust file ingestion experience autoloader enables sql users to leverage streaming tables okay pretty much uh, these these are the differences and when to use the copy into command and when to use autoloader This is it for today, guys. Some basic things about the autoloader and the copy into command. Autoloader is very common when you have streaming data. You will see it all the time at work. Play around with each mode to see the results and decide which one is the best for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.